Hey everybody, uh, in some running trade on all 40 of my accounts, or some of them here. I trade on two platforms at the same time. Let me cover up one more here. Okay, there we are, down the last three runners. One here near recent uh, support, and one way down here just in case. Now it's a Friday, and there's Deutsche Bank now looks like they have problems, and they've been shaky since the 2008 financial crisis. Um, so anyhow, if we just totally... If we finally get one of those like huge capitulation days that actually sticks into the close uh, and a Friday it could happen. So one thing I want to point out, uh, I'm working on a Z cloud indicator for the existing group and I'm about to close the doors on the one time offer. We're already out of beta and I haven't raised price yet, but I'm going to raise price probably on Monday or Tuesday. Uh, and then we're going to go to the 77 a month monthly subscription model. But I have a Z Cloud indicator that I use in uh, here in uh, NT8 that I'm translating over to Ninja Trader. I'm sorry, to TradingView. But I actually found some additional items that I'm testing out to see if I like the version I'm building in TradingView. Uh, better than this one. And there's a reason why I use this. I use this to jump into, uh, you know, hitting, like when we're in a downtrend, these rollovers when they push, you know, I keep hitting them and adding because uh, I like working dynamic trades. So I was hitting all these highs this morning, adding and adding and adding to an original short position that I made money on here. So we came up, I was adding, taking some off, adding, taking some off, adding, taking some off. When I get certain indications on a very low time frame with my Z cloud, so let's go take a look at Trading View real quick. In my higher time frame analysis of the NAS 100, the NQ, the Triple Qs, the MNQ, whatever you're trading, they're all pretty much in lockstep with each other. Very range round this morning, not touching either side of the bands. We're finally going to come down, test some recent support. Let's jump down to the lower time frame. And I just shot a uh, a reel for my Instagram channel talking about, hey, this supply down here is like a magnet. And that I feel like if not today, beginning of next week, we're going to suck this market's going to come down and just run through all these levels. So anyhow, uh, we got the Z box with the primary buy and sell signal set up. I've given the, uh, the group actual four different indicators. Let's go take a look at that real quick. So the group has gotten the Z box indicator. They I've given them just the band so they can use it however they want that do not repaint a Z line indicator. Uh, and I've also given the group non repainting. So everybody that comes in on the one time price, you actually are getting four indicators. You're about to get a fifth, which is the Z cloud, which is very important that I integrate with the Z box overall system. So let's go back to the uh, lower time frame. And uh, we did just slightly peek our head above the water. I was selling the NASDAQ uh, on this push and this push, took some off, came up, rolled over, added, took some off, came up, rolled over, added, took some off, came up, rolled over, added, took some off, came up. And I actually added some more right on this rollover because I thought this thing's finally going to probably die and at a minimum come down to near-term support. It has done that. Uh, and I'm going to see if you know, throughout the day we come down and just go ahead and flush out. I mean, there's a lot of levels below. And that's, this is like a magnet. And this market's been holding above these levels uh, since the big ramp up, uh, you know, several, you know, wh where we had the multi-day run up. We had the test uh, on Fed News. They pumped it again. We've come down and very likely uh, today and into next week, all these levels are going to get tested unless we have like, you know, some sort of ceasefire deal or something very unique uh, in the market. And with Deutsche Bank having problems now, uh, you know, watch out, put your seatbelts on. There's a very good Forbes article from 2008 to July of 2010. The central bankers, I call them the criminal syndicate central bankers because they're a private entity and they want everybody codependent on uh, liquidity. They want everybody to be in debt and they want everybody codependent on liquidity. They gave out $16.2 trillion to U.S. and European banks so they could stay afloat. Now, a lot of that was 
the equivalent to like Fed discount window, short-term borrowing, but they gave it out the back door and they didn't account for it in Congress. The only way we know about it is a congressman went and took the information and released it on the House floor back in 2010 or, or 11, right around there. Otherwise, nobody would have known about it. So I know that's starting and going on again. So yeah, we know about what they're giving out the front door, but what are they giving out the back door to prop up the banks? And ultimately, all that debt is on the backs of the U.S. taxpayers. And back then, Deutsche Bank was one of the banks. I think they got six or eight hundred billion dollars uh, in that 2008 to 2010 period to stay afloat. So I know I'm digressing from the trading, but I'm just letting you know, if we get contagion like that again, and there's still one hundred and twelve trillion dollars of CDO debt, compartmentalized and parked off to the side from the past, uh, things could get ugly fast. There's a, there's a gentleman I follow. His name is Edward Dowd, D-O-W-D. Uh, he's a former BlackRock hedge fund manager. He, he managed $14 billion for them. That guy is very intelligent, and he digs into data like nobody else I've ever seen. Uh, he happens to also be covering COVID and some other things. He's really got some eye-opening data on the contagion, uh, the prior debt, the new debt that's building, and so on. I, I suggest you follow Edward Dowd, uh, very sharp when it comes to calls. I followed his calls for a long time in this analysis of the market, and he's really uh, spot on, in my, in my opinion. Okay, so anyhow, Z-Box, I'm going to close down the one-time buy next week. Uh, we're moving to 77 monthly subscription only. The only thing I'm waiting for before I close it down is I want to make sure I get the Z cloud out to the current group and then ready to activate uh, for everybody on the subscription model as I open up the website this weekend and the password protected members area with all the training. So there you have it. If you have any questions on the Z box system, uh, the training, there's a bunch of training going out on the primary trades some adjustments with the settings and the Z-Box indicator, and what are secondary trades. Like today, there was a lot of really nice secondary trades. There's also another uh, setup I'm working on uh, on this particular chart here. The Z-Cloud, when I get it ready, will be incorporated into this. This will be a secondary setup. Uh, I'm going to teach you how to work those. So this is kind of in development to be finalized, if not today, tomorrow. So all kinds of good stuff coming down the pipe and a lot more automated signals with alerts, especially on the high moment, momentum pulse moves, how to uh, work those and uh, how, to, how to get into those trades. Okay, so there you have it. So today on all the 40 uh, 300K prop accounts I'm trading, you can see some here. I'm gonna go, once I get to $3,000 per account, over 40 accounts, I'm going to then go defensive. So if we get a push and then we stall and start lifting, I'll just let go, I'll be done for the day. Kind of targeting this area, uh, one good push to this area will put me over 3K. That's why I'm down to only three M and Qs as runners, and then I'll kind of call it a day. If it starts to really accelerate, I won't add any. I'll just watch it, watch it, watch it. When I get a bounce on my lower time frame trading view chart and get a buy signal, I'll flatten out any remainders and uh, call it a day. So there you have it, Z-Box system. I'm leaving the trading view, or I'm leaving the uh, Ninja Trader platform. I'm only going to use it for order entry with domes. I'm not even going to do charting anymore and moving everything over to trading view. In the Zone Algo, Zone Space Algo YouTube channel, there's a video I've shot specifically on the reasons why I'm leaving Ninja Trader moving to TradingView, and a lot of it has to do with data. Like when I open my charts, NinjaTrader loads my charts with historical data. TradingView doesn't do that. It stays perfect all the time because they're hosting your chart on their end at all times. So there's never any data feed interruption. That is wondrous. I'm not saying NinjaTrader is bad. I'm just saying for me, uh, I don't like when there's any sort of interruption in internet or connection to rhythmic that I suddenly have all my charts now getting backfilled with historical data. It drives me nuts. Uh, so I have to run NinjaTraders on servers just so I can always have a clean look 
at from Sunday open to Friday what actually happened with the bands and everything. They don't recalculate, but if they get filled with historical backfill data, it taints the look from that moment in time backwards. So the backwards look gets tainted by data that's only uh, open, high, low, close. Uh, it's not what happened tick by tick, bar by bar. Okay, there you have it. If you have any questions, let me know at info at zonealgo.com. Talk to you later. Have a great weekend.